in the hopes of having better audio quality. I bought a microphone through a Lazada sale a while back. And after watching lots of reviews and tests done on this microphone, I was totally sold. The Boya BYMM1 is a popular beginner go-to mic for YouTubers and vloggers. And its cheap price makes it such an easy purchase. But after using it for some time now, I couldn't help but notice that the videos I've been posting still didn't sound too great or if it was any better at all. Okay, time check. 3.59am. A few weeks ago, I was lying down on our living room floor. I'm not a big birthday person. I don't make birthday wishes. And I worked really hard for these videos, but the audio just really makes me cringe. So I figured I'd get to the bottom of it and find out what was wrong. Was I sold a fake unit? Was I using it wrong? Or was I doing something I shouldn't be in the edit? Now, quick disclaimer, I'm not an audio person. I honestly have very little knowledge in this area and I'm still just learning as best as I can, especially with the post-processing part. So I definitely knew there was something wrong with my current editing workflow. But watching the raw results of other people posting about this mic over here on YouTube and comparing it to my own results still didn't sound quite the same to me. So yes, the editing had something to do with it, but I knew something else was wrong. So I decided to make this video to do some tests and share the results I had with this mic. Hi, my name is Justin and I do my best to share meaningful content over here on YouTube. I make videos about photography, filmmaking, and content creation. I share my thoughts, ideas, and experiences in the hopes of inspiring others. And occasionally, I do some reviews about the stuff that I purchased and have found to have added great value to me. So if you're into those kinds of things, then please consider subscribing and I look forward to making more content for you guys. Mic test, mic test. This is the mic test using just the onboard microphone of the Sony A6400, which is currently mounted on a Gorillapod about 50 to 60 centimeters in front of me. I'm using a 16 millimeter lens to try and get the camera as close as possible so that it picks up more of my voice versus the ambient noise inside the room. Um, there's currently an air conditioning unit running about four to five meters in the other direction. So again, this is the mic test for the Sony A6400 onboard microphone. Mic test, mic test. This is the mic test for the Boya MM1 mic, which is connected directly onto the Sony A6400 without the dead cat on. And the built-in microphone gain of the camera is now set to about 8 to help us achieve a recording level of around negative 12 dB, which is good for audio before post-processing. So again, this is the mic test for the Boya MM1 mic mounted and connected directly onto the Sony A6400 without the dead cat on. So mic test, check one, two, three. Mic test, one, two, three. One thing you need to remember when using an external microphone on something like the Sony A6400 is that you're gonna have to lower the internal gain of the camera to make sure you aren't clipping or peaking way too high. I've learned that the best practice with regards to audio is to try and make the microphone do all the heavy lifting. This is the mic test for the Boya MM1 mic connected directly onto the Sony A64, this time with a dead cat on. The camera is still mounted 50 to 60 centimeters in front of me and we're still using the same 16 millimeter lens to try and get the camera and the microphone as close as possible so that it picks up more of my voice instead of the ambient noise of the room. So again, this is the mic test for the Boya MM1 mic with the dead cat on connected directly onto the Sony A6400. Check mic one, two, three. Check mic one, two, three. This is how I usually record all of my talking head clips. And honestly, just by listening to the files, I really didn't hear much of a difference between when the dead cat was on and when it wasn't. However, when I brought them over to my editing software, I did notice that the file with the dead cat on had noticeably less noise. This is the mic test for the Boya MM1 mic connected directly onto the Sony A64, this time with a dead cat on. So again, this is a mic test for the Boya MM1 mic with the dead cat on connected directly onto the Sony A6400. Check mic one, two, three. Check mic one, two, three.
I admit that the touch-ups I did on the audio on my published videos on my channel were not the best in the world and that these sound better already, but sometimes I really don't like using my 16mm lens just because of the distortion that it gives which is common to wide-angle lenses, and especially when I'm indoors and I can set the camera on a tripod and use something like a 35mm and set it a bit further away from me. So we're gonna do some tests using that setup now. Mic test, mic test. This is the mic test for the onboard microphone of the Sony A6400, which is currently 1 to 1.2 meters in front of me using a 35mm lens. And it's mounted on a tripod, and the gain is set to about 25, which is pretty high, to help us achieve a recording level of around negative 12 dB. And I'm, at this distance, I'm sure the camera is now picking more ambient noise versus my voice. But we'll have to see later on when we listen to the recording. So check one, two, three, mic test. This is the mic test for the onboard microphone of the Sony A6400 without any attachments on. Check one, two, three, mic test. Mic test, mic test. This is the mic test for the Boya BYM M1 shotgun mic connected directly onto the Sony A6400 without a dead cat on. Um, so again, this is the mic test for the Boya BYM M1 mic connected directly onto the Sony A6400 without the dead cat on. Um, mic test check, one, two, three, mic test check, one, two, three. Mic test, this is the mic test for the Boya BYM M1 mic, this time with the dead cat on, connected directly onto the Sony A6400 using a 35 millimeter lens. Let's check, mic test, one, two, three, check, mic test, one, two, three. Mic test. This is the mic test for the Boya BYM M1 mic. This time with the dead cat on, connected directly onto the Sony A6400 using a 35 millimeter lens, which is now still mounted about one to one point two meters in front of me, and we're trying to see how well it picks up my voice versus the ambient noise inside the room. There's still air conditioning running about four less than four meters in the other direction. So this is again the test for the Boya BYM M1 mic at a distance of 1 to 1.2 meters with a dead cat on using a 35 millimeter lens. Check mic test, 1, 2, 3. Check mic test, 1, 2, 3. There's a definite decrease in audio quality. And even though we're using the same shotgun mic because the camera is now set further away because of the 35 millimeter lens, it's now picking up more of the ambient room noise. This is one lesson that I've had to learn the hard way. Now to get around that, we're gonna have to attach the Boya BYM M1 on something like a boom pole to try and get it as close as possible without being in the frame. Now, since it's not gonna be recording straight onto the camera, we're gonna need to plug it into an external recorder like the Zoom H1N. Now there are a few advantages to this setup. First one is that since the camera and the microphone are now independent from each other, I can pretty much set the camera or use whatever lens that I want without having to worry about the loss in audio quality. The second advantage is that now we're going to have two recordings for audio. One from the camera and one from the external microphone. And even though the recording from the onboard microphone of the camera is not going to be that great, bad audio at the end of the day is going to be better than no audio at all. A third advantage is that the Zoom H1N has its own gain controls, which makes it easy to adjust to the level that we need to record at. And the last advantage is that the Zoom H1N can record at a higher bitrate, giving us better quality audio, which is going to be helpful, especially later on when we bring it over in post. Now, there are also a few advantages to this setup. First one being is that, of course, you're going to have to find a way to get the microphone closer to you. That means some using something like a boom pole or being creative in hiding the microphone in some way. And the second is that later on when you bring it onto your editing software, you're gonna have to manually sync the audio that you have from the external recorder and the video that's recorded on your camera. This is one step that some people find to be a hassle, but to me, at the end of the day, with better audio, it's gonna be worth it. Mic test, mic test. This is a mic test with a Boya BYM M1 mic connected directly onto a Zoom H1N, this time without a dead cat on. And it's currently sitting right above this frame at about 30 centimeters away from my mouth, angled roughly at 45 degrees. 
again, this is the mic test for the Boya BY MM1 mic. Connected directly onto the Zoom H1N without the dead gap. Check mic test, one, two, three. Check mic test, one, two, three. Mic test, mic test. So this is the mic test for the Boya BY MM1 mic connected to a Zoom H1N. So again, this is the mic test for the Boya BY MM1 mic connected directly to a Zoom H1N with a dead cat on at about 30 centimeters above us and away from my mouth. So check mic test, one, two, three, check. Mic test, one, two, three. Mic test, mic test. So this is the mic test for the Boya BYMM1 mic connected to a Zoom H1N, this time with a dead cat on. Still mounted on a boom pole sitting right outside of this frame at about 30, 30, 30 centimeters away from my mouth and still angled at the same 45 degree angle from above. And we're trying to see how good the pickup will be using this method. The air gun is still running in the background about five meters away from the air gun. The camera is still set about one, 1 1.2 meters in front of us, still using the same 35 millimeter lens to avoid distortions. And the current gain setting of the Zoom H1N is set to about 7.5 to eight to help us achieve a recording level of about negative 12 dB, which is the level we want to be in before post-processing our audio. So again, this is the mic test for the Boya BYMM1 mic connected directly to a Zoom H1N with a dead cat on at about 30 centimeters above us and away from my mouth. So check mic test, one, two, three, check mic test, one, two, three. So would I recommend this mic and who do I think it's for? Well, number one, if you're really tight on budget, then it's a definite yes. At 800 pesos or less than 20 USD, I don't think you can really go wrong with it. Now, when it comes to the audio quality, although it's not the best in the world, it's actually very workable and good enough, especially when you know how to properly place the mic and do some few tweaks and edits over in your editing software. It also comes with some standard cables that although you can buy separately, is actually pretty nice to already have right out of the box. The shock mount that it comes with also is a standard tripod mount so it's easy to attach it to any kinds of tripod that you already have lying around. Another thing is that it doesn't need an external battery or a separate set of battery so you really won't need to worry about whether it's recording or whether it's on. You just have to make sure that it's plugged in straight into the camera or an external recorder and you're using the right cables and then you're good to go. As for the type of user, its compact size really makes it great for vlogging and basic YouTubing. And although I wasn't really able to test it outdoors because of the current pandemic situation, if you're planning to do some shots indoors for some talking head clips, then it really is such a great alternative to just using the onboard microphone of your camera or just the microphone of your cell phone in general. Let me know what you guys think. Is a Boya BYMM1 worth it or is it time for an upgrade? And if you already own this mic, how do you find it? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.